Hello and to one and all salutations, my name is Speedy. How are you all? Today I'm bringing a very special uh, review today. It's a review that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And in fact, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a behind the scenes secret. This is the third time that I have shot this review because the first two times I shot it, I just wasn't satisfied with the overall quality. Nonetheless, in this video, we're finally going to be taking a look at Fresh from Bandai, the Kamen Rider Drive DX Series Drive Driver. This toy's been out since about October 2014, and credit where credit's due, I have been rather patient in me getting my hands on it. It's finally here. It arrived this Wednesday, John, Wednesday June the 3rd. I apologise if you just heard a door stamp scared the shit out of me. Um... But, uh, yeah, shall we have a look at the belt? I think we shall. Okay, here we go. You join me here at my props table for this. This is the Kamen Rider Drive Drive Driver from the Bandai DX toy line. As you can see, the box itself is very, very snazzy. Just to give you a quick rundown of what you see on the box... Here you have a picture of the driver itself. Here you have a picture of this year's Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Drive, in his type speed form. Up there in the top right, you have a picture of the shift brace with the drive type speed shift car inserted. Up on the top of the box, you have a picture of the two shift cars that are included in the set the drive type speed shift car, and the tyre Kokan Max flare shift car. For those of you who uh, didn't know, Kokan is Japanese for exchange. So in regards of the tyre Kokan, it translates to tyre exchange. And then also up here we have a picture of this year's Kamen Rider logo. If we move to the side of the box, we once again have a nice picture of the Rider logo. We have a picture of Kamen Rider Drive's car, which is called the Trideron, and it is based off of a 1992 Honda NSX. And there we have another pic of the, uh, of the belt. On the back of the box, we have a ton of product shots. As you can see, it does this, it does that, it does a bunch of this. It can emote. Hey, more products for you to give Bandai your monies for. And then up at the top, you have a picture to show how the drive driver and the shift cars can work with the DX Trideron, which I will be reviewing. God only knows when, but I will be reviewing it. And then on the other side panel, you get a nice picture of Kamen Rider Drive sporting the Max Flare Tire Kokan. And then you have a brief summary of all the box's contents. So again, you have the drive driver, you've got the belt sections, you've got the shift brace, the drive type speed shift car, and the tire Kokan Max Flare shift car. So that's pretty much it in regards of the box for the drive driver. So let's go ahead, pop this box open, and go into its contents in a little more detail. Actually, before I get on with opening the drive driver, I just wanted to show you all this. This is the packet that the drive driver arrived in on uh, on Wednesday. <clears throat> As you can see, obviously, I've uh, I've blocked out my address there for uh, for reasons of my own sanity. But yes. This is it. This was the bag that the drive driver came in, and I was going to do an unbagging video. But the problem was, was that I had recorded it four times, and I just, I don't know. It didn't really come out the way I expected it to. Also, I just want to point something out as well. It says up here that it is a small packet. This is the smallest, this is the biggest small packet I have ever seen. That's safe, by the way. Anyways, to give you a rough idea of how big this packet is, 
There is a copy of Grand Theft Auto 5 for the Xbox 360. Small packet? Yeah, right. And of course, what is a review on something like the Drive Driver without an unboxing shot? So let's see what we can do here, single-handed. This piece of cardboard I don't really need for this shot, but I'll quickly run through what it is uh, real quick. This is just basically a little uh, a little info pack that you get. So here you've got a collector's card that is compatible with a Japanese arcade game. You've got a leaflet promoting said Japanese arcade game, as well as a Kamen Rider game for both the PS3 and the Wii U. That was kept very quiet, if you ask me. This sheet here, focus, thank you. This sheet here is the assembly for the belt. And then this sheet right up here in the back is your overall instructions. Now, I just want to point something out as well, actually, before I have to segue and begrudgingly charge my phone. Look at the artwork on this collector's card, okay? Just, just look at the artwork on this. I will be honest, if there was a Kamen Rider comic that had this artwork in there, I'd buy it. I would buy that comic. The Japanese writing be damned. Anyways, let's get back to the contents of the box. Come on. Here it comes. Don't worry about the box. I do take care of my boxes though, I swear I do. Okay, here we go. What must have been hopefully a few seconds for you lot was about six hours for me, um, rather depressingly. But anyways, yes, here we go. Time for a parts breakdown of what was in the box that you saw earlier. We shall start off with this little bit here. This little block, I find, is a bit of an oddity. But what it does is it actually takes up the slack of the remaining belt sections. Or, no, allow me to rephrase that. It basically takes up the slack that's left over from the two belt halves there. I like to call it a slack block. As you can see, it sports the logo of this year's Kamen Rider, and right up here, in these four corners, it actually sports some moulded in flathead screws. How adorable is that for a detail? And as you saw, it is made up in a very nice metallic cherry red, so it's been coloured to match the strap on the shift brace, the two sections of the belt, and actually the drive type speed shift car which we'll actually discuss in a bit. Now, however, we will actually discuss the shift brace. Let me just get the shift cars out of the way. And we'll move on to the shift brace. And here it is in its shift brace goodness. You can tell I've been trying to shoot this video for too long, can't you? But anyways, as you can see, the shift brace is plastered in Bandai Silver, which makes it look very, very sporty. Go a nice quick 360 of it. This groove here is actually a track system that works with the shift cars. I'll get into a bit more detail in relation to that later in the video. The on-off switch for the shift brace is right there, and when you turn it on, you get a red glowing LED. That is to say that the shift brace is live. Now what I'll do for the purpose of the, uh, of the rest of this video is I shall quickly adorn the, uh, I'll quickly adorn the shift brace. And now we will look at the shift cars, which is the collector's gimmick of this year's Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Drive, which 
to be honest, is a, in my opinion, huge improvement over the collector's gimmick of last year's Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Gaim, which was, of all things, padlocks. I kid you not. But again, here is the collector's gimmick of this year's Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Drive. The car on the left is Drive Type Speed. Done up, as stated earlier, in the same metallic cherry red that the slack block, uh, the strap on the shift brace, and the two belt sections are made up from. And the car on the right is Tire Kokan Max Flare. Now, you may have all noticed that the cars don't look too bad, but... There are these two grey strips on the cars that break up the overall aesthetic and in turn the overall look of the car. Worry not, however, they are intentional, because what those grey lines do is, well they basically house a two-point ratchet mechanism that allows the cars to go from their machine mode to their lever mode. So here you see drive type speed on the left in the machine mode, and on the right you see max flare in the lever mode. And it's a simple two-step ratchet, as stated, which you can easily manipulate with your index finger one way, and your thumb the other. And it's just a nice little something you can do to help kill the boredom and to wind up your family and friends until they threaten to hurt you. So there is that. It does sometimes slip, depending on what angle you hold the shift car, but it's very, very rarely that it slips. As I say, so long as you hold the shift car at a, uh, at a correct angle. Now, there is a second ratchet on the shift cars, and it all has to do with this grey track here. And basically that grey track will fit into the shift brace. And on the shift brace, I'll just quickly remove it. So I can show this off. There's a series of four small teeth here, 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 and here. My phone isn't picking it up. Oh wait, hang on. There they are. As I say, they're here, 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 and here. Just, uh... So, yeah. So, there's that. And basically, those four teeth interact with those nubs that you see on the track system on the bottom there of drive type speed. So, what you do is you take your shift cut, you flick the back end round, The car slips in, and then it's on a two-stage ratchet. When it gets up to here, it will travel a little further to hit a spring-loaded button. And via that spring-loaded button, it will send the data from the, belt, uh, from the shift brace to the drive driver to tell you what shift car it is that's in the shift brace. Speaking of, let me just quickly put it back on. And then we shall take a look at the remaining two belt sections of the drive driver before getting onto the driver itself. Okay, there we go. And here is the first belt section you all saw me remove. And once again, sticking to the automotive motif that Kamen Rider Drive has, the buckle is designed like an actual seat belt. They even got the small mold of uh, the small patch of sewing near the buckle. How how adorable is that in regards of attention to detail? Seriously. Uh, credit where credit is due to Bandai, they really do have a good eye when it comes to detail, and it's safe to say that the drive driver is no exception. 
like uh, some parts of the shift block, because the, uh, sorry, not the shift block, the uh, the stack block, because it's hollow, both belt halves are made out of a soft, flexible plastic. And here is the other belt section that you saw me remove. And again, it is made up in the same soft, flexy plastic and attaches to the belt in a different way. You've got this lever here, and through a series of smaller levers and springs, it pulls these two nubs inwards. As so. And speaking of nubs, much like many of the Bandai roleplay belts and roleplay watches that we've seen over the time, it does have a nub and port locking system. As so. I seem to recall that I had one of the uh, the toy replica watches from Ben 10. I can't remember the name of the watch now. But the strap had a very similar system, and I was actually thoroughly impressed with how secure the connection was. So, credit where credit's due to Bandai. They have a winner with that, uh, with that connection. Now, you're all probably asking yourselves, Well, Lewis, this is all well and good, but are we going to see you wearing the belt? The long and short of it is no, and I'll tell you for why. When the belt got to me on Wednesday, I tried every method that I could think of to squeeze myself into this belt. I even had the nub and port locking mechanism on the belt sections on the very last port, and it still wouldn't go around my waist. Bottom line is this. I have deemed myself too fat to wear the drive driver. Which means I'm now going to have to pay out a certain amount of cash for a belt extension. Which is easier said than done because they are far and few between. In fact, the last one I saw was on a Canadian website and it was going for nearly 40 Canadian dollars. I don't know how much that is in pounds. I'll probably put it up as a caption somewhere in this frame. Anyways, ranting and raving over, let's take a look at the main component of this set, the drive driver. So here is the driver, or belt sun, as it is called in the show. And as you can see, it is made up to look like the dashboard of a car. Here you have your three dials, you've got some gold highlighting to... Um, to look like the faux wooden dashboard that you would get on some older cars. Down here in the silver, you've got the rider logo. Up here, you have an ignition key, which also has the rider logo. And on the side, you have the release mechanism for the belt buckle. And on the back, you have a nice, you have a nice plastering of detail to make the back of the belt look like the bottom half of a car chassis. So again, very, very nice detail from Bandai. I do appreciate the level of detail that Bandai have taken upon themselves to put onto this belt. I, I take my hat off to Bandai for putting all that time into the moulding. Anyways, that said and done, let's turn on the driver and see what happens. So, as you heard there, you had an engine ignition, you heard the driver, who is voiced by Chris Pepler in the show, say, start your engine, and you got a pair of engine revs. Now, as stated earlier on the box, the belt can emote. And the only reason why it can emote is because both the belt and the shift cars are sentient. They have an artificial intelligence. And I must be the only person who finds that absolutely adorable. Because, just to give you a rough idea of the scale of these shift cars, they're no bigger than your average Hot Wheels vehicle. They're just that little bit longer and that little bit wider than a Hot Wheels vehicle. But they are about the size of a Hot Wheels vehicle nonetheless. 
so basically, uh, Kamen Rider Drive is working with toy cars. He's basically work. It's basically what Kamen Rider Drive is. It's basically a mashup of Kamen Rider and Knight Rider. That was the aim that the producers of the show were going for. Except they don't have David Hasselhoff involved, or a nineteen eighties Pontiac Trans Am. But I digress. They are sentient. They do have personalities, and that's why the uh, the belt can emote. Now, everything you do with the belt does start with a turn of the key, and how to get the different faces to pop up is you turn the key, and then you press this red button on the shift brace, as I shall now demonstrate. So there you have belt Sans happy face. No! That was Belt Sun's thinking face, I think. I don't know. There's his angry face. Why? There's Belt Sun's dumb goofed face. Belt Sun hates me now all of a sudden. And there is Belt Sun's sad face. Now, if you leave it to cycle, it will go to the thinking face and will then go into a sleep mode. It's weird. It's almost as if he knew what I was going to say. How spooky. Anyways, now that that has been done, let us do a henshin. Let us transform into Kamen Rider Drive. And again, what you want to do is you want to take your shift car, flick the tail end around, Insert the car into the shift brace, and then you want to ratchet the shift car up, as I shall now demonstrate. And shift. So there it is, you have done a henshin, you have transformed into Kamen Rider Drive, Drive Type Speed. And from here, you can do your attacks. Now there is a Stage 1 attack, a Stage 2 attack, a Stage 3 attack, and your finisher, your Hisats. And basically, all depending on the, uh, on the number of times you ratchet the car up, will depend on what stage attack you give. And if you manage to ratchet the car up fast, in, in a quick succession, he will say the name of the shift car in a quick succession. But I'll show off the, uh, the one stage and three stage attacks for the minute, because they're the attacks that get used the most in the show. So that was your one stage attack. Now to go to your three stage attack. So there's your three stage attack. The two stage attack I will show off with Max Flair later in the video. Now, from here, you can do your hisats. What you want to do for the hisats is you turn the key, press the red button on the shift brace, and then you ratchet the car upwards. Hisats. Your hisats stand by noise. Shift. And there it is, you have done a Hisats. And from here now, you can do a Tire Kokan. So let's get on with that. Get Max Fair ready. You get your exit noise. And shift. Max 
And so there it is. You've done another thing. You've done a tire kokan. You now wield the Max Flare tire. And I should point out, the connection in the shift brace is very, very secure. Those cars aren't going to go flying off anytime soon. And again, from here, you can do your attacks. Uh, with Max Flare, I will demonstrate the two-stage attack, for those of you who are curious. Also, I do apologise if you can hear a loud humming noise. It kind of sounds like a helicopter, at least to me. That's just the uh, the motor powering the LED board, and I think it's only when it's on a wooden surface does it make that noise. Because I've had it when I've been sitting down, and it doesn't seem to be that loud. Anyways, time for your Max Flare Hiss Sats. So again, turn the key. Press the right button. And shift. I can't. There we go. Resurator. And there it is. There is all the sound effects that you get from the drive driver. Or is it? Because there is one more sound effect. Turn the key. Remove the shift cut. And then you press the red button on the shift brace. Nice drive. Nice drive. Thank you, Beltsan. You're so nice. So what we're going to do now is we are going to segue. And I will redress the set so I can gather my final thoughts. Cue the segue. So overall, what do I think of the drive driver? from the Kamen Rider Drive Bandai DX toy line. Honestly, this is an absolutely fantastic product. Now, I will admit I do have a few gripes. For example, the infrared signal between the shift brace and the driver itself is quite limited. In fact, I believe it goofed up twice in that last clip. And that's only because I think the maximum range of that infrared signal is about three feet, which isn't really that big a gap, if I'm going to be honest. The second gripe that I have, and this is more a personal one, I will admit, it's the fact that Bandai didn't make the belt just that little bit longer on either ends of the belt sections for people of a more broader stomach, shall we say, such as myself, to adorn the belt. Which means, again, I have to buy a belt extension, which, as stated previously, seem to be far and few between. Uh, if I do remember, I will put up the, um, uh, the price uh, as a caption, because I believe I said earlier in the video as well, I managed to see one on a Canadian website for about nearly 40 Canadian dollars. Which I think is a bit steep, personally, but I digress. Um, but yes, yeah, I really, really do like this belt. It, it looks good, it sounds good, you get a pair of absolutely incredible looking shift cars. I particularly like the design of Max Flair. I think Max Flair's design looks friggin' amazing. I just, I, yeah. If you can find this belt on the cheap, by all means, pick it up. Uh, I do advise as well, if you have some additional cash left over on top of that, maybe try and get the deluxe release of this belt that had the shift car holder with the Tire Kokan Funky Spike shift car, which will actually be my next Kamen Rider Drive product review. I actually managed to get this for just over £40 off of Amazon UK, and, well, I mean, you know, I wait, I've wait. i waited patiently for it, it has been out since October 2014, and, uh, yeah, 
The belt is great. The show itself is incredible. In fact, uh, the more recent episode really ended on an exciting cliffhanger. So roll on episode 33 is all I'm going to say. Nonetheless, this has been Speedy of Terror Productions saying thank you all for watching. And I shall see you all on the next video. Take care, guys.